Granada, the pomegranate city, home to the Arab citadel and palace, the Alhambra. We began our day with a walk through the city. We headed for the cathedral and through the historic old Moorish quarters. And after lunch, we visited the Alhambra Palace and its general life garden area. Next morning, we walked to the caves and then visited the Royal Chapel before our journey to Cordoba. Our hotel. That's our room there. Our guide, Craig, gave us an introduction over breakfast. There's a certain amount of time where there are included activities, going up to the Alhambra, going to see the mosquito, the orientation walks, etc, etc, etc. And then we were off. Casa de los Tiros, once fortified with cannons, now a museum. Inside, were pictures of the Catholic monarchs Ferdinand and Isabella and uh, their relatives. Ferdinand and Isabella overthrew the last Muslim rulers in 1492. Here is the statue of Isabella. with Christopher Columbus. Coral de Carbon, a Moorish inn dating from the 14th century. Its facade is richly decorated. Inside, a courtyard surrounded by rooms. The courtyard is now used for plays and concerts. Al Quesaria, the old Arab market. And it's neighbouring piazza, the cathedral, external artwork, here the stonemason has preempted the pigeons. At its side is the royal chapel with ornate stonework containing initials of Ferdinand and Isabella and their royal crests. The Madrasa Palace, the street reformer, more ornate decorations. Until the budget ran out. The Carmelite convent. With its nuns making their observances. We walk through ancient narrow streets. To this point, with magnificent views of the Alhambra, and then went on to Plaza Nueva for lunch. After lunch, we head uphill to visit the Alhambra. We enter through the Gate of Justice a mixture of Islam and Christian symbols. At the western end is al Qazaba, the military area. It has several large towers connected by massive walls. Inside are remains of the military barracks. The towers give commanding views of the city and beyond. Fresh snow lies on the distant mountains. We return through the Bailey Gardens to the Charles V Palace. This unfinished building is a Catholic edition dating from 1527. On entering it, we encounter this circular two-storey patio. The roof is a 20th century edition. The jewel of the site is the Nazrid Palace, 
These buildings date from the late Arab rule and have richly decorated walls and ceilings. Here are some elaborate arabesques and calligraphy. There's fine detail on the arches. Lower tiled walls are topped by elaborately decorated upper walls and ceilings. Stalactite-like ceilings. It's quite breathtaking. The arches leading to the Court of Lions. Beautiful window screens. Beyond the Nazrid Palace, it's a terraced area. Arches frame the city. A prayer room overlooks the gardens. Looking back over the heart of gardens, there's general life. We enjoy the San Francisco gardens before heading to general life, the recreational building of the Nazrid Sultans. Pomegranates for the Pomegranate City. The general life low gardens. The water gardens. Arabesque covered side arches. The Sultan's Garden. The High Gardens with their view over the Sultan's Garden. We head down through the Oleander Walk, back to the Charles V Palace and down the hill to the hotel. After dinner, we returned to our morning viewpoint to get this nighttime view of the Alhambra and the city. Early next morning we walked up to Sacramonte to see the cave houses which date from the 16th century. They were occupied by marginalised groups, gypsies, Jews and Muslims expelled from the city. Some housing remains poor but most looks quite modern. The museum, Alhambra, the city walls. Some houses are under the city walls. Next, we went for a tour of the Royal Chapel. It's worth a visit, but for some reason photography is not allowed inside. At lunchtime, it was time to take the bus to Cordoba.